Alright, so if you haven't already, make sure to check out all my previous videos on good spots to loot plants and motifs. As far as I know, they all still work very well, as I use them to make money on the side. So the first tip I think everyone should know is what they can loot in order to get plans and motifs. So there are several types of lootables that drop plans. They include, but are not limited to, urns, wardrobes, trunks, cupboards, nightstands, cabinets, coffers, backpacks, desks, etc, etc. These are just some of the things you can loot for plans. The most common ones you'll encounter will probably be urns, trunks, cupboards, and backpacks from personal experience. Barrels, crates, do not tend to drop plans. They are usually more along the side of provisioning ingredients. And from personal experience, jewelry boxes don't give a lot of plans. Although they do, they do give like trait stones and some other stuff. Now with respect to furnishing plans, it should be mentioned that there is a loot timer after finding a furnishing plan of a specific rarity. Meaning after finding a plan of a certain rarity, you may not be able to loot a plan of that rarity for a period of time. In my personal experience, it takes approximately 5 minutes for greens to reset, 15 to 30 minutes for blues to reset, and as for purples, it might as well be closer to a day. Now, I'm not 100% sure when it comes to purple plans, but in my experience, I've never found more than one purple plan a day on any given character. Now, if you're farming on a character in an area and manage to get green, blue, and purple plans in that run, it's safe to say you can leave and switch characters to repeat the run because chances are you won't find anything after until the loot timer resets. Now this is a purely anecdotal you know, piece of information from a friend and a subscriber but once you start picking up a lot of white plants, it's safe to say you won't find anything good anymore so it's safe to switch characters. Also I think it's important to mention that once you start encountering a lot of empty lootables like, you know, empty urns, empty trunks, empty wardrobes, empty backpacks, etc, etc. Safe to say you can log off and then switch characters or log back on right after because you're going to encounter a lot more of those empty lootables later on and it's just not worth it to do any runs anymore. Alright, so the next tip, scour guild traders. A lot of the time you'll have players on ESO who don't know the value of what they've found and just want to sell their wares quickly so it doesn't take up bank space. Every day that I've searched for plans, you wouldn't believe the deals that I've found. Now, every continent has skill traders, typically in major cities, but you'll find singular traders scattered as well in the most random obscure places in different continents throughout Tamriel. The traders in major cities typically have more expensive plans because of the high traffic of players that stop there, whereas the singular traders tend to have cheaper sales due to less traffic. However, the overall selection in isolated single guild traders is much less compared to major city guild traders. Right? And that's just a trade-off that you'll have to accept. Now in terms of knowing what things are worth, I suggest you search online or sample view a lot of guild traders to get a feel of what things are cheap and worth buying. This may take some time, but over time you will develop a sense of what to spend for a specific plan. As a general rule, if you see a large supply of a specific plan, it's probably not worth much. Now, master crafter writ vendors for random plans aren't a bad idea either. This is more for people closer to the end game in ESO. So essentially, you're completing writ contracts for a specific crafting skill, whether it being blacksmithing, clothier, woodworking, jewelry crafting, you know, turning them in and then getting writ vouchers in exchange. These writs can be exchanged with a whole range of different plans, as you see here. Now, in terms of acquiring these, you can obtain them through completing daily crafting contracts through any province, through the wooden board, or you can purchase them through guild traders. Now, I'm on PS4 North America, so writs are valued at approximately 1,000 each, but you shouldn't just buy a writ for, say that it's worth 6k for 6 writs. You shouldn't buy that from the guild trader, because you have to take into account the materials it takes to make that specific writ or for you to complete that writ contract. So honestly, you know, I'm not going to do, I don't want to do too much math here. So if you see a writ and it appears cheap, like there's six writs that is in one contract and they're selling for like 300 each, I would say that's a good price and you can buy it given that you have the motifs to craft it and the materials. Now, which plans should you spend your writs on? 
in my opinion, I think it's worth it to get the clockwork and Merkmeyer plans, since they're so hard to find in their respective zones. There aren't any great lootable areas in Clockwork City or Merkmeyer. You can probably farm these zones the rest of your life and find Jack Squat. And also, legendary or gold colored plans from these vendors are almost exclusively found by these rip vendors and some guild traders, so it's not a bad idea to spend Ritz on these as well to add to your collection. Remember, any doubles that you acquire, sell to a guild trader to finance your next furnishing plan purchase. Now, doing daily quests that drop unique specific plans for a particular region, there are several regions across Tamriel that offer daily quests that have a small chance to drop plans in the reward coffers. Some of these regions include Western Skyrim and the Reach. Right, Western Skyrim tends to drop Solitude structural plans, whereas the Reach tends to drop Dwarven structural plans. The daily quests you are required to do are usually a mixture between world bosses, harrow storms, and delves where you have to collect things. My advice? Do those dailies across multiple characters to maximize the chances of you receiving these. They're great for building large structures, and they're also really great for making a quick buck. Now there's also another one I should mention, which is the demon weapon quest that you can start. And um, you can actually do this quest and submit it to the guy in Grotwood. And there's a chance to get the Khajiit Enchanted Brazier, which I'll let you... I suggest you search up online to see another guide that shows you how to get it. I've never personally got it before, so that's why I don't have a video on it. But it's a really rare plan. It used to drop a lot more frequently, but not anymore. And the reward you get is, you know, the furnishing plan of a Khajiit Brazier Enchanted, and it's super, super rare. Now you should be aware of some plans that can only be obtained through thieving. Know that this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but it does give you a rough idea of what you can find and the types of NPCs you have to pickpocket. So you have, you know, all the throne plans which can be pickpocketed from noble NPCs in any of the zones listed in brackets. You have the Alinor Pew, which has to be pickpocketed from peace, priests in Somerset. And the Khajiit Skuma Bubbler, which you can pickpocket any drunkard NPC. You ideally want to level up your Legardeman skill to improve your chances of successful pickpocketing. And that's basically it, so thank you so much for tuning in, mahalo. Uh, please like and subscribe if you found the video helpful. And remember, all the links posted to my other farming videos are posted in the description of the video down below. Thank you. Have a great day.